Please welcome to Best Friend Energy, Jenna Elfman. I can't even believe you're here. Jenna, of course, we all know you from being the star of Dharma and Greg. I think one of everyone's all-time favorite shows. Um, you were nominated for three Emmys for that role, won a Golden Globe. We need to talk about Fear of the Walking Dead because we are in the final season. It was the most fulfilling experience next to Dharma and Greg and Keeping the Faith. These are my wow. top three favorite experiences I've oh, had. Oh, I wow. love that so much. Me too. We have a seven year time jump connected with this place called Padre, which we're going to learn a lot about in season eight and how it has affected every character and what their methodology of survival is and how in conflict it is with a lot of our heroes. And there's also a lot of Walking Dead influences in this season with the flagship show that I think the fans are gonna totally dig. Joanna was a film major, okay? But she gave up movies because they were too stressful for her and she gets emotionally invested in every character and it's too much. One of her favorite movies and potentially the last movie she watched was Keeping the Faith. Um, Keeping the Faith is brilliant. I'm also Jewish. For people who might have not seen Keeping the Faith, it sounds like you're just a fan of Jewish comedy, but it, oh. it's not. It's actual <laughs> piece of the plot line. Um, so it, a rabbi, a priest, best friends fall in yeah. love with the same woman. You know, these three characters grew up together as children. And then they come back, you know, they've all moved away. Or, well, two of them stayed in New York and she went away and became a very high powered business executive and she's coming back to town and they're gonna meet her at the airport and who are we all now to each other? Sure. And um, Edward Norton became a priest, Ben Stiller became a rabbi and I'm the girl in the middle. And of course, you know, Edward Norton falls in love, um, but as a priest, he has, he cannot engage in those feelings. And, and it makes him also explore what are those feelings that he's actually mm -hmm. feeling. Um, and Ben Stiller's character doesn't feel, you know, as a rabbi and I, my character's not Jewish, he doesn't feel that he can engage in a meaningful relationship if I don't have the same values that he has. Mm -hmm. And my character is secretly studying Judaism because it's important to her and she's been affected by his commitment to something greater and that's something that she needs is something greater than herself. And she hasn't told him that. And, and in this argument, this one key argument, you know, he's, she's saying, you have to learn to put a little faith in other people because mm. that is who you should be as a rabbi. And, right. you know, she doesn't want to have to make the point that she's studying it for him to you know, see something in her that's worth being together over, you know? So I think all of those are very meaningful dynamics that occur in everybody's life in, in one regard or another. How we hold friendships as, um, they should be important. You know, we all, as you two, are such good friends to each other. Then you set such a beautiful example of friendship. That's so nice. Hulu, where your show is now streaming. What do you think the cross-generational appeal is for Dharma and Greg? I take a lot of pride in that character of Dharma because she, to me, like I had people write fan mail to me and say, I just want to thank you because I didn't, I was suicidal and I didn't commit oh. suicide because oh Dharma God. proved to me that it's okay to be yourself. And oh, I felt I like I do have a place and I, I didn't kill myself. And I want to say thank you. Oh, <gasps> and there was several of those, like that wasn't just right. one. Wow. And, and I went, you know, there's portraying something, a character, a girl who is mm -hmm. confident in who she is and isn't gonna change who she is for her husband, her in-laws or anything else because she knows the value of being true to yourself. Mm -hmm. That's contagious in the best way. That. At the time, a lot of, the women on television who were independent, you know, as we came out of, you know, with that girl, Mary Tyler Moore, and, and mm -hmm. um, you know, they were like women in the workplace and independent. But a lot, also a lot of them had slight neurotic tendencies because I felt mm -hmm. like men going, okay, you can, you can star in your own show, but, but we gotta like, you know, you gotta be a little neurotic or something. Right. And, and that's fine. But Dharma was the first character to actually be super joyful and super mm -hmm. 
who she was. And, and one of the descriptions that the showrunner had said is when you, you scratch the surface of her, you don't get another beast of neuroses or anything. You just get more her. And that was unique at the time as well as to portray a woman in full bloom. How was the move to Austin? It was it was like a movie. It was Labor Day weekend 2020, and it was the hottest day on record for the city of Los Angeles. It was like 120 oh something degrees. Oh my Ugh. God. And the reason we all didn't fly is because we had a hamster that is right, really sure. meaningful oh. to my kid. And that's why we RV'd it instead of all of us flying was for the hamster. You're a really good mom. We're on the freeway. We're deep out of LA now. And I'm like, oh, it, it's like, it's hot in here. He's like, why can't you turn down the AC? He's like, it's fine. I'm cold. I'm like, how are you cold? I'm like about to faint. And you know, yeah. when you get hot, boy, you oh, get grumpy. Oh, it's it's aw- the wor- it's an emergency. Awful. Like the hamster's like on his back trying <laughs> to expose his belly to air. Like, and my kids are screaming, I'm hot. <laughs> and my husband's like, we're fine. So I go up to where he is. He's got a fully different AC. He's got the engine AC. He's fine. <laughs> Totally unreal that it's 120 something degrees in the back. I mean, I, we don't have time for the raccoon story, but we will tell it at some point. Talk about keeping an animal alive, okay? Like, the, <laughs> all right, just tell the raccoon story. Okay, I'm just gonna tell you really quick. John comes running in the house, pants on fire. It's raining outside. He's like, "There's a raccoon giving birth in the rose bushes," and I was like, "Oh my god, oh my god!" And he goes, "He goes, I, I don't, I don't know what to." And he was. Full panic. And I didn't know what he was necessarily panicking about, but it started to occur to me that he felt like he was a doctor at Cedar Sinai Emergency Room. And he needed, he, he was so concerned about the safety and health and well being of this mother raccoon as though I was in labor. So he's like, he's like, do I need to bring her towels? And I was like, no, you don't need to bring her towels. She's a wild animal. And he's like, doing like breathing exercises with her, like trying to hold her legs in the air. And I'm like, John, go stop it. You do not need, she is well equipped. She's a, she's a live uh, woodland creature and with claws and she's giving birth. You need to get in the house. And he's like, but it's raining. I'm like, she lives outside. What in the world are you talking about? It's raining. Of course it's raining. It rains on raccoons. I'm like, John, seriously? Stop. He couldn't sleep that night. He was so worried about her well being. I was like, I have given birth to two of your children. I have never seen this level of engagement. By the way, this same raccoon was like, I think in and out of her lives, like popping out of garbage cans for a while. John would take selfies with the raccoon. John, it's a raccoon. It's not like a kitty cat from down the street. This is not a domestic animal. I I haven't been able to just tell you like how obsessed I am with you guys. Um, I really, really like when we moved to Austin, uh, I was trying to, you know, it was so insane because it was like pandemic move. And um, and I started filming a month after the move. Anne was homeschooling my children. And it was oh my just gosh. like so many things. And um, the conversion of the garage from like all the boxes of our existence into like, my husband was doing some traveling and I was trying to organize things for him. And I, I like obsessively watched every episode oh, and I'm so like nice. hungry for you guys to, for, oh. to do more episodes. When's the next season coming? And like hungry, hungry for it. Um, like so obsessed. I'm so obsessed. And, um, and you hear this all the time because you are so awesome. This is no, the response you're so because you're so good at what you do and you're so lovely with how you do it. Um, but you are a, you were a huge part of my, uh, life during this time of transition. Oh. So I just wanted to thank you for being so charming and so easy to consume and so in terms of the, how relatable you are and then being like competent beyond with your skills and it just is like the perfect combination and it's oh. it just makes the whole thing like I totally um I well, just it's appreciate crazy that. to hear a compliment coming from you so that's seriously that's I'm like do you want to be thing. on every week Jenna? I know. <laughs> <laughs> Jenna, thank you so much for coming on Best Friend Energy. You're now our best friend. Oh, and thank you, Jenna. I love you too. <laughs> thank thank you. you for having me. Thank you so much. Okay, bye. Bye.